Austin. Austin. Excellent. On that note, I welcome to you our Class 10 Plus Celebration of Service and invite everyone that is here to join us as a guest to uh, take their seats. And uh, our honorees for the night, please uh, stay in the back. We'll welcome you all together. And I also want to welcome everyone joining us online. Yes, we are webcasting around the world so that uh, all our host organizations across the country, all our fellows and alumni across the world, and anyone who would like to celebrate Atlas Core can join us today in perpetuity as this will be available on our YouTube channel. So with that, I would like everyone to join me in giving a warm Atlas Core welcome for our honorees for the evening as they come up and grab their seats in the front. Excellent. So this is always one of our favorite days of the year because it is a celebration of service and it's a time for us to look back 12 months ago when these individuals from all different countries came together not knowing one another, not knowing what the year held for them. All they knew is that they had made a commitment to leave family, friends, to do something amazing, extraordinary, and to go beyond their limits to really see what they could achieve as professionals and as individuals. And you will find out this evening that they really have achieved. And what I think is so amazing, and we had a closing retreat today where we talked about everything that had been accomplished during the year and also transitioning back to their home countries. And at the end, they shared a little of what they learned and they reflected about how they were feeling when they first started during orientation 12 months ago. And the amazing thing that came out is amongst these individuals, they've talked to UN officials, they've been working with USAID, they've been talking to government officials, and the thing that meant the most to them was the personal relationships. And they said, we've done amazing things professionally, but will I, what I will always value is these human connections that I've made, and knowing that I've created a network of people that I can call and depend on for the rest of my life. And it goes just beyond those that were Atlas Core Fellows, but the networks that they've made in the communities where they've been serving. So I'd like to thank everyone here and everyone joining us for being part of that network because that's really what we're celebrating is that we're all here together to demonstrate our commitment to global service and the difference that each of us can make when we don't let political borders, geographic barriers, or cultural differences put a blockade between doing what's right and really achieving what's best for our communities. I'd also like to highlight some of the interesting facts and characteristics about this group. So what's amazing is that sitting here in front of us is not only our class 10, we call it class 10 plus because we like to celebrate all our fellows and so we have fellows joining us that may have initiated their service with class 9 or class 8, so we're glad we can welcome them all together. Also in this group of individuals, they have combined contributed more than 18,000 hours of service at their host organizations. So I think that deserves a round of applause. They have also been an award-winning group. So beyond just being recognized as amazing Atlas Core Fellows, a lot of them have achieved some amazing individual accomplishments. And as I mentioned earlier, I think an interesting one to mention is that um, one of our fellows, Aldo, who um, from Mexico has actually had the opportunity to meet um, Ban Ki-moon of the United Nations winning the Innovation Award, which is an amazing honor for his organization back in Mexico. And also, Arain, while he was here, achieved a recognition from um, the government of Jamaica, being outstanding youth leader. And so these are just some of the recognitions that even while they're doing their amazing work at their organizations, they continue to be recognized for their ongoing contributions at home. And also, it's interesting to note that of these nine fellows that are here tonight, seven of them will be extending beyond their initial 12 months of service and continuing their service at home and abroad with their host organizations. So we're inspired to see this ongoing connection and commitment. And so without further ado, beyond just hearing my inspirational words, I think it's also valuable to hear some perspective from our fellows. So it is my honor to introduce one of these inspiring fellows. And she is one who shared with us today that when she started her service, she wrote a note to herself that one of her goals was to meet amazing people. And I will tell you that she has done just that. And every time that I'm around, every time at any event, 
I can just follow in her wake and just enjoy meeting these engaging people. And she's also done amazing work at her host organization, Hasna. And I think when I was talking earlier about this network, she did an amazing job at inspiring the network. She actually brought a group of youth in from Turkey and Armenia, if I'm correct. And in order to make that experience here in Washington, D.C. even more rich, she reached out to the fellows and she said, who can present on social media and communications? Who can talk about organizational management? And so she actually had the fellows come together and share their knowledge with these emerging youth from Turkey and Armenia to learn how they can be more active in their communities. So I think it's just a great way of showing how leveraging this network can be so valuable. So with that, I would like to invite our fellow graduation speaker, voted on by her class to share a few words and reflect on her experience, Sine Amerhakyan from Armenia. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Abby, and thank you all the fellows who voted for me and for the trust to be the graduation speaker tonight. And uh, after I accepted this really honorable offer, I have emailed uh, all my fellow friends uh, to uh, sh and ask them to share with me their thoughts, fun stories, quotes, anything they consider interesting and important to be shared with today's audience. And uh, fellows, already my friends, were really very quick and supportive as ever. So today I am going to be uh, the voice of us seven class 10 and coming from seven different countries on three continents. <laughs> So, back in, uh, unfortunately, uh, today Monica Diaz and, uh, from Spain and uh, Obiora Okoe from Nigeria are not with us for different reasons, but they both promised to follow us online and they were both sending their warm greetings and uh, hellos from Spain and Nigeria. So back in uh, September 2012, where we were just, uh, we all accepted a starting fellowship and we're just arriving to Washington DC, adjusting ourselves to new life, new work environment, and uh, everything seemed uh, so different, so new, sometimes challenging and complicated. But this time, uh, and it didn't matter how many times before we have been to the US, this time it was completely different because we all were coming with a certain mission. And we are all were and are still full of enthusiasm, energy, and desire to make changes in peace building, LGBT rights, uh, tech and education, uh, children and women rights, public health, and many, many more compelling issues. And today, almost a year later, I can say that many of us have achieved our goals, if not more. And we learned a lot, we shared a lot, we really opened our minds, hearts, and hands. And we all come from different national, ethnic, education, and back, uh, work backgrounds, but uh, there is one thing which uh, we, we, we all bring that is our personal and professional experience, and also uh, our shared values to support um, uh, all the good causes for uh, beyond our uh, benefits, our own benefits. So uh, we all have really amazingly inspiring and interesting stories and uh, that we can share and that can also show that even one fellow can make a significant change in host organization. But as uh, Abby has mentioned already and as I have written and also that was one of the things which many of fellows emailed me, one of the most uh, important achievements and one of the most precious things is uh, the people we met here. And um, many of us really have not shared only food and home with each other, but we have become friends for life. And no matter uh, now where from we travel and where do we go, we the fellows know that at least in 54 countries we have friends and fellows that can help and support us. And yes, all this wouldn't be possible without Atlas Course uh, great team and every single person who has ever contributed this fellowship program and supported the idea of bringing nonprofit professionals from all over the world to the US. 
and Atlas Core gave us this really fantastic opportunity and our host organizations made our life much easier and really literally helped us uh, feel at home being away from home and with all this I'd like to once again thank uh, Atlas Core team, everybody who is involved in this great program, and also our host organizations, our colleagues, our friends, volunteers, donors, anybody who was uh, in any way related to this program. And uh, I was traveling back home last week and I had a conversation with a friend of mine and only then when I back, uh, went back home I realized and I mentioned it to him. Uh, that this uh, was a journey of change on both ends. <laughs> you change here, you change there, and you bring those changes. And finally, um, we all, each of us, when we accepted uh, to be the Atlas Core Fellow, we also uh, silently accepted to uh, take over the mission of making this world a better place for everyone. Uh, and certainly, we'll continue our mission like as long, I suppose, as we all live. <laughs> and <laughs> as we always say, like once a fellow, always a fellow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sine. Great words. And I think you did a great job of representing the thoughts of your class. Mm -hmm. Inspired words. And next we're going to have um, a very special speaker. And as people say, we're obviously a network very much on the move, and we're also an organization on the move with a leader who is also very much on the move. And there actually has been a few graduation celebrations that we have not had our founder and CEO present, and it is tonight that we're honored to have him to join in this evening and to really see this class 10, our first class that achieved double digits to celebrate their service. and. Um, it's just wonderful to reflect on where we came from back in 2006 and now here we are, 2013, and the countries we've reached, the people we've been able to engage, and also the organizations that we've connected with. So with that, I'd like to welcome the man behind the mission, as I like to say, our very own founder and CEO, Scott Pia. Thank you, Abby. Thank you very much. I, I have attended all the graduations. I've always have just done it from that angle right there, uh, which is a great opportunity, although not really exactly the same thing. So, um, But it is much better to be here in person, and I appreciate the opportunity to share a few brief words, uh, and mostly brief because I don't think I can uh, articulate better what Simi was able to articulate for, I think, the class, but also for most of the fellowship. Um, but I, I do want to take this opportunity to say congratulations, and uh, I hope it's been an amazing experience. We, For me, class 10 was a memorable class because it was our 10th class. It seemed like an important milestone where people would stop asking, like, oh, this is a new organization, or this is a new idea, or this is, or this is going to keep going. It had this sense of great um, perpetu perpetuity to it, like of, of distance, of, of length, when you reach that, that 10th class. And, and also, I think it was the first year we started doing three classes a year and really began to pick up a lot of momentum with, with the number of fellows coming and with the host organizations and the, the quality of the fellows. So I quite vividly remember your class arriving, and I, I'm actually having a hard time believing that was so recently, <laughs> but uh, I guess time just flies when you're having a good time. I just want to share three quick thoughts with you. Uh, and uh, the, the first broad one is that the fellowship has always been, from the very beginning, uh, a, a, an excuse, almost, a vehicle, if you will, to create an alumni network. Because I think as powerful as the change is that you're having at your host organization, I hope as impactful as our trainings may be, the true impact of Atlas Core, of, of each of you, and much more powerfully of all of us, is the network and is the alumni community. For as, as amazing as seven, eight, or nine fellows can be on one class, or as 77 fellows in a year can be, and, and the number of hours that are logged in that year, it does not really begin to compare to the potential opportunity for change, both personally and globally, uh, with the decades that we have ahead of us. And if you embrace that concept, if you believe that that is possible, that through this fellowship, through this community, going back to your countries and communities, you can continue to have an even more powerful, 
role in creating change, then that is what Atlas Core is really all about. Like, I want you to have an exciting year. I hope it has been a challenging year. I'm sure it has in both <laughs> ways. I want it to be a year where you learn and you grow and you teach at the same time. But my biggest hope, my greatest aspiration, is that it becomes a community that when you go back, you stay in touch. It becomes a family that you don't always agree with or even always get along with, but like family, you never lose faith and support from. And as you go back to your communities, I want you to know that Atlas Core is there for you. That not only the staff, Abby, as many of you know, is also an alum, uh, but even those of us that aren't alum of the program, alumni of the program, uh, and the fellows from earlier classes and classes to come will be part of this community network. Because I've been involved in social change and activism from a fairly young age as a youth activist. And one of the things that I learned was that you can learn all the tricks in creating social change, but one of the most challenging things was having a group of people who supported you over the long term. When, you're, when your family thinks you're crazy, uh, when your spouse questions, whatever it may be, or even when you yourself wonder if you're making the most rational decisions in your life, or even the impact that you want to be having, surrounding yourself by believers and doers who share that same passion has been the most valuable thing for me. So that's why I hope that you will get out of Atlas Core. Uh, I hope that as you graduate and go back to your countries, you remember a couple of quick things. First, that not just on day one of the fellowship or on the last day of your fellowship, but hopefully throughout your life as Atlas Core Fellows, that you will always be teachers and that you will always be students. We should never be so proud uh, of what we accomplished, the awards that we've received, the things that people say about us, not to remember that we can't keep learning and not to forget that there aren't others that we can help teach and bring along. As Atlas Core Fellows, as part of this community, we are always teachers and we are always students. That is my hope. Uh, I hope that you continue to take great risks. Uh, a fellow earlier today said, this is my last year to do crazy things. <laughs> uh, I hope that is not the case. <laughs> I hope that this year has taught you that doing crazy things is awesome. Uh, and this is the first year that will help you to keep doing great things, having a community that supports it. Keep taking risks because... The, the way we've tried to affect change, and I say we globally as, as, a, as a human race, has not been good enough. What our parents and our grandparents and previous generations have done to address poverty or the, to address the environment or address conflict in the world has not been enough. And that we, our generation, fellows, future leaders, need to take greater risks to make greater change. Continue to be teachers, continue to be students, we continue to take risks. And then finally, uh, embrace this network, coming back to this notion of the alumni network, that look to this community for support, and hopefully do what you can to support this community. And I think from that mindset of how can I continue to help past fellows, fellow fellows, future fellows, and where can I not be afraid to ask for help, and not just in traveling to 54 countries, but in going online to ask for support, whatever the case may be, to keep you going through the long haul. So I hope it has been an amazing fellowship, but we don't just say once a fellow, always a fellow, because it rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> we say once a fellow, always a fellow, because we believe that is where our impact, our collective impact as a community, as an organization, uh, as a fellowship, can really be in the long run. So congratulations on your year, uh, and good luck with the uh, decades ahead. And if you ever need anything from me, uh, you all know how to get a hold of me, as I know how to get a hold of you <laughs> as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. Always uh, inspirational words. And I think a great way to transition from our reflection part of the evening to look at the recognition part of the evening. You know, we talk a lot about Atlas Core, baby the machine that makes this happen, but we definitely don't do it alone. It takes all these fellows, and it takes a lot of great individuals and organizations from hosts to volunteers and that's who we also want to celebrate this evening and so we have a few awards we'd like to give out and the first one is our distinguished partner in global service award 
And this award goes to one of our host organizations, the Association for American Medical Colleges, or more fondly and shortly known as AAMC. And AMC is someone that came to us through a friend of Atlas Core. And actually, I remember way back in 2011, there's some representatives from AAMC attended our, I think that would have been the Class 7 welcome celebration that we held in Washington, D.C. And we got to know some of them, and then the conversation started happening, and then we were able to place a fellow at AAMC. And it wasn't just about placing one fellow. It was about how to make a partnership. And so AAMC committed to, this is something we want to do ongoing. We want to have numerous fellows, and we also want to get it more involved. And so Atlas Core, in addition to the full-time placement in organizations, we have a global leadership lab, which includes orientation. It includes ongoing professional development and our closing retreat. And AMC is now a partner that hosts those events for us. So when we have 20, 30 fellows. They provide space. They suggest speakers for coming in. And it's amazing to see how together we can promote both of our organizational missions by just using our core competencies. And so it's just been such a thriving friendship. That goes way beyond just a partnership, because we know that we can call on AAMC, and they can call on us. We can throw together ideas, and we know it's all in this interest of a global partnership and really helping bring together this network of amazing individuals. So it is an honor this evening that we can recognize AAMC, and I would like to call forth Jenny Samant as the representative of AAMC to accept the Distinguished Partner in Global Service Award. <laughs> And Meredith, if you would assist me in bringing up the award. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. We have this uh, lovely plaque for you. And thank you. Look at this. It's a proudly display. We invite you to say as much or as little as you are inspired to do. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I absolutely have to say, first of all, thank you very much. Thank you, Scott, for the brilliant idea and following through on the idea. There are many great ideas in this world, but execution of them and having such a wonderful class as these fellows is a testimony to that. We're very honored to receive this recognition, and I'm very clear that it is for the organization, and I'd like to just recognize those who are here. This never would have happened without the great leadership, and Gabrielle Campbell is right here, who is our chief of application services. And while we need leadership support, the actual execution and day-to-day -day support and welcome to the fellows that we have hosted would not have happened without my fellow colleagues who are here. And I'd like you to just stand up, all of you who are from the Dallas. <laughs> so I, too, remember that first reception and how excited I was, because for those of you in the room who may not know what our organization, what we do with um, at, with Atlas Core, is that we're building a network as well, and very much we're building relationships with faculties of health science and medical schools around the world so that students and faculty members can be more connected and can indeed learn and share with each other. So I think that there is a great synergy between our shared values. It was really important for us to begin to learn about other parts of the world, and so Obiora, wherever you are, maybe you're there, maybe you will watch this at a later time. He is physically right now in um, East Africa for us, reaching out to medical schools there. And he really helped us to understand, we had an idea that Sub-Saharan African medical school partnerships were very important, but he helped us to move that idea from just thoughts in a room at uh, our M Street building to actual relationships. We were so excited by having him that we came back to Atlas Core and said, when do you have another class? And I'd like to recognize Dr. Hiba Saleh, who is our <laughs> second <laughs> Atlas Core. <laughs> who is also with us, and she is helping us to build those relationships in North Africa and the Middle East. It is indeed a partnership that I hope will have a very long future, and we are very grateful as we are in our infancy stage and in that beginning stage, so I can relate well to your saying, you like to get to the point of being mature, <laughs> not saying it's a new program anymore, but we're very grateful to you, and we do look to the network of all of you fellows, and 55 countries will look forward to keeping connected with you through Atlas Core. So thank you very much for the work that you all do.
Thank you. And, and just what a great testament. Thank you for so many things from ANC coming out. And I think what's interesting, Oviora, who is one of our um, honorees for the evening that we're celebrating in Abstentia, actually, if you look, he's posting on Facebook. He was in Kenya, and we have a fellow, Eric, who's class 12 and started in May 2013, serving at the UN Foundation. And Oviora actually met and was hanging out with Eric's family during his time in <laughs> Kenya. And I just think that's so amazing is that that is the connection we're creating. He says, I'm going to a country where a fellow is from or is currently living. I need to obviously connect with them and their family. And so that's what it's all about. Um, and um, for our next award, um, as many of you know, running a nonprofit always takes resources, and so it's always important that you have people who are interested in investing and really see a great idea turn into an excellent organization. So that is why we have our next award, which is the Outstanding Supporter to Global Service. And this award we're presenting this evening to two individuals, Steve Wozencraft and John Evans. And Steve actually joined our board of directors about a year ago, and he's a spark plug for the Atlas Core Network. He has an energy and a personality, I swear, larger than life, and he's done a lot of great work in really connecting us to interesting ideas, interesting individuals, and help us push ourselves to make these new partnerships. And John in the same way, and they've really embraced our fellows, really gotten to know them. And one story I love about Steve that I, um, I always love to tell is that it was in September of 2012 that we received notification that we received funding from the Office for the Special Envoy for Sudan and South Sudan. It's a grant that we've been waiting on, we were wondering if we are going to achieve it, and we were si finally received the call. Well, it just so happened that very day that Steve was visiting the State Department on other meetings, and he happened to send an email. So as I um, had told Scott, I said, oh my gosh, I just got the call. We received the grant. We're going we're gonna to bring 14 fellows from Sudan in the next few years. And then he sees this email from Steve, and he says, Steve, great news that those meetings we had at the State Department, they came through. And Steve said, well, I'm going to go visit the Special Envoy's office, obviously, and say thank you. <laughs> and we love, literally 10 minutes later, there was a picture in my inbox with representatives from the Special Envoy's office and him saying, you know, thanks for the grant. We're so glad we can start this partnership. And that's just kind of the energy and inspiration he brings to what we do. And I think he brings such a great face. And we're honored to recognize him and John this evening and to do so we have a special guest who's also a wonderful friend of Atlas Core. It is Robert Haney who's with the Global Partnerships Initiative at the State Department and he's going to accept the award on their behalf and share a few words about their work and partnership. Thanks to John and Steve. <laughs> and uh, they want to send their regards and apologize that they couldn't be here. But they are huge supporters of Atlas Corps, and so are we as State Department. Uh, we understand all the good work that you guys are doing around the world and very much support global service and really kind of citizen diplomacy or the kind of people-to-people -people exchange that we talk about at State Department. That is so important. It's about these networks that you're creating that you spoke about earlier and how are we really furthering good ideas and you know building relations not just at the government to government level but to you know, citizens around the world so thank you to all of you and to your predecessors and future Atlas Core fellows you guys do great work and uh, again thanks to John and Steve for being such huge huge supporters of what you do um, we also uh, partner with them on other great initiatives such as the Global Equality Fund, which through an event like that, I met Luisa over a year ago um, and learned about the great work that you've been doing um, supporting the LGBT community, so thank you again. And uh, again, we look forward to working more with Atlas Core in the future, so thank you. Thank you, Rob. And our final recognition for the evening is our inspiration to global service. And people, I think another uh, great attribute of starting a nonprofit organization is having great friends, friends that are willing to back you up and really willing to do anything for you. And Atlas Core, every day we call on those friends, whether it's to contribute, whether it's to give ideas, or whether it's just to be a friend to our fellows. And so what we do, we have a local ambassador program. And what that means is that we connect individuals in the communities where we serve with our fellows. It's kind of a first friend program. So that when these fellows arrive in the community, they have 
two to three people that they can reach out to, bring them to coffee, bring them to events, help them to become not just someone passing through a community, but a full part of that community. And I think what's real fun, I know recently some of our fellows celebrated Eid, and they invited some of our local ambassadors to join in that experience and to really share a meal. And as our fellows will continually tell us, that's one thing they always learn in American culture, that it's typical to eat in front of your computer, to eat and talk at the same time. And for them, meals are so important. So I think they're often teaching us and sharing with us the value of breaking bread and sharing a meal together. And so I love hearing these stories of when our local ambassadors are invited to fellow events. And there are two wonderful ladies that we'd like to celebrate this evening who are our inspiration to global service. When we launched our local ambassador program when Atlas Core started, and over the years we've looked to refine it and make it better. And these two individuals, Debbie Wagner and Christina Weeder, came to us and they said, we love being local ambassadors, but we want to do it better. We want to help with the training. We want to give resources. We have some notes of what we've been doing. And they even started coming to our orientation week when we invite our new local ambassadors in. They said, we'll provide a training. We'll provide the question and answer session. And they've just taken our program to a new level. And I know they've also been great friends to so many of our fellows over the years. So it is our honor this evening to welcome these two wonderful women and recognize them for being an inspiration to global service to Atlas Corps and to our fellows around the world. So, Debbie and Christina. So, first of all, uh, congratulations to the fellows. And what you, what Abby didn't mention, is that we're also housemates. So, <laughs> just lamenting the fact that we didn't plan a dance or, or something. <laughs> we put together, we could have done something really big and crazy, I suppose, but we didn't. Um, I didn't prepare any remarks, but I wanted to thank the Atlas Core folks for pulling me into this volunteer opportunity back in 2009, um, and for all the amazing fellows I've been able to either be a local ambassador to, or to interview, or to read applications for, or to take to festivals, and just how much they have taught me. So thank you for this opportunity and for this honor. Um, and I just, I, I think the, the takeaway message really for me is that networks are super important because Abby was a good friend of mine before I became involved with Atlas Core, and I think Debbie was just about to move into our house <laughs> when I was at an Atlas Core event and saw her across the room and I thought, that's, I think that's who I was moving into our house. Um, and so it just sort of seemed in inevitable that um, you know I would end up getting involved with Atlas Core and it's been a wonderful experience and I've really enjoyed getting to know all the different fellows and, and being a part of this important work. So thank you. So as the saying goes, once a fellow, always a fellow, and once a friend of Atlas Core, always a friend of Atlas Core. So don't forget, we might be calling on some of you for some upcoming activities. Um, and now it is my distinct honor to move to the very special part of the evening where we recognize all of these inspiring individuals who have been waiting so patiently <laughs> for their time in the sun. So I'd like to invite up my colleague, Meredith, who is our program manager here at Atlas Core, and she is going to recognize our honorees for the evening. Sure. Um, thanks so much for coming out, and I'm really excited to present um, Class 10 Plus, as Abby's calling it. <laughs> um, and uh, so I guess we'll, we'll start the honors. There we go. Um, so first up, uh, we have Ahmed, who served at the International Relief and Development um, Organization. And uh, Ahmed's supervisor said about him that Ahmed is recognized as an international nonprofit leader and was selected among hundreds of candidates as an Atlas Core Fellow. He is both talented and highly motivated. I'm consistently impressed with Ahmed's productivity and dedication to improving the lives of those less fortunate. Um, that's Dr. Lali Chanya, his, his supervisor. So congratulations to Ahmed. Oh, the whole thing. Got it. And the picture. Here you are, Ahmed. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, so, sorry, if I didn't make clear, 
once I once I finish reading your your quote and everything, come on up and we'll present. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did not make that. Uh, okay, next up is Aldo, um, who served with the National Audubon Audubon Society in New York, and his supervisor had um, plenty of wonderful things to say about him as well. After speaking about his work to engage the Latino Hispanic community with Audubon and conservation, a participant remarked that they were surprised to see Audubon doing such work. Ever proud, Aldo replied, welcome to the new Audubon. <laughs> Aldo has helped create that new Audubon. He launched a Spanish language website, created Spanish marketing materials, and a popular social media campaign that brought in several thousand new Spanish speaking supporters. He's helped give staff a new perspective on engaging supporters and building a conservation movement. Thank you, Aldo. Congratulations on it. Thank you. I want to uh, just say thank you to the Arbon uh, DC staff that is here to accompany me. So thank you very much. <laughs> and our very own Anja Doss served at Alice Corps. Um, and her supervisor, Kelly Reed, um, said that DePonta has been a tremendous addition to the Alice Corps team, leading a significant overhaul of the in person and online components of the OGIS training, training program. Moreover, DePonta's innovative approach, tech savviness, <laughs> and willingness to roll up her sleeves has made her a critical member of our team. Her contributions will benefit fellows and host organizations for years to come. So, congratulations. <laughs> And uh, her supervisor, Nestor Stacy, said that CMA has brought a totally new insight into our organization. One of the most amazing experiences that I witnessed is how much she cared about her work. CMA's program called Side by Side was based on groups from Turkey and Armenia coming to the U.S. to share their knowledge about making videos, and most importantly, making a joint video. Her program was a great success, and I'm sure it was to a large extent due to the extreme sensitivity to presentations and attention to detail. So congratulations, CMA. <laughs> if you guys could just move out of the projector, you've got like <laughs> writing all over you. <laughs> yeah. okay. That's perfect. Very new decor. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next up is Luis. Over here. Um, so he, he served at Gay and Lesbian Victory Institute. And um, his supervisor, or former supervisor, Senior Luther, said, Luis's dedication to equality for all and empowering people to do their best has changed Victory and the Alcor Fellowship for the better. He took Victory's political leadership training for LGBT people from Latin America and taught everyone, from our trainees to our interns to our CEO and board members, along the way. I'm so grateful for his service. So congratulations, <laughs> And thank you to my colleagues. <laughs> 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 Next up, Madiha Shafi, who is from Pakistan and served at CARE. And her supervisor, Sarah Lynch, said, How fitting that Madiha managed a program at CARE called Women and Girls Lead Global. Um, thank you, Madiha, for spending your year with us. We all grew from the experience and wish you all the best as you take on your next global leadership role. So, congratulations. <laughs> Sure. Three two books. No, there's no more um, memory on your phone. Too many pictures of Wait, okay. You got it? I got one. One. <laughs> Make it good. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I have to be having this. 
And Obiora, who, as uh, Jenny mentioned, is in or is in African African Jews. Yeah. Um, and uh, he served with the Association of American Medical Colleges. So he couldn't he couldn't be here tonight um, because of his travels. But uh, Jenny said that Obiora was the first fellow the AMC has hosted as we launched our new international service into Sub-Saharan Africa. Obiora has been an invaluable member of the GLOW team. His understanding of the region, our prospective member institutions, and cultural understanding in guiding our entrance has proven to be of great value. We have extended his at core contract in order to now fully benefit from his continued work in the region. So congratulations, Obiora. <laughs> Next up, Arane Edwards from Jamaica, who serves at the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. Commerce. Um, and his supervisor, Joanna, says that Arane has been an invaluable part of the NGLCC team. A strong public speaker, he's represented the NGLCC at events like our National Business and Leadership Conference, as well as meetings with external stakeholders. His greatest contribution to date is assist, assisting us in developing a comprehensive application for funding that will allow us to significantly expand our international program throughout much of Latin America. It would be the largest grant in MGLCC 10 year history. So, oh, that's for you anyways. <laughs> Here you go. Congratulations. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> and then next up is uh, Tipaxon Manpati, who goes by Sayu. <laughs> she serves at the International Accountability Project in San Francisco um, and is from Thailand. And uh, her supervisor said that from her first week, Sayu has been totally dedicated to IEP and supporting the success of our organization, Grassroots Partners, around the world. Sayu contributed in, to all aspects of our work, including influencing the direction of IEP's strategic plan, and all while leading a policy research project that engaged grassroots and community activists on three continents, which will influence World Bank policy. We are so thankful to have had Sayu and have learned a lot from her. So congratulations. <laughs> I should have practiced this. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. All right. And finally, we have our class 10 superlatives. Um, so these were all voted on by the fellows. Um, and these are just fun little awards um, and uh, just to, to recognize some, um, some great leaders among this class. Um, and so, um, as you can see, the awards are most likely to lead their country, most transformed, best motivator, most likely to make everyone laugh, most outgoing, and most cult culturally adaptable. Um, so, most likely to lead their country Next up, uh, that's motivator. Oh, okay. <laughs> most transformed Sayu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try best motivator here, but okay. Best motivator. I think that's Louise. Louise. Yay. Yay. We're inspired. <laughs> <laughs> and then, let's see what. Most likely to make everyone laugh is Arane. <laughs> 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 You're making us laugh right now. We're going to say it. You did kind of shame with these deals. <laughs> Most outgoing are over. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the last one 
is most, most culturally adaptable in CMA. And congratulations, class. <laughs> congratulations. Um, we're so proud to, to call you Outscore Fellows and Outscore Alumni. Um, and we are so excited to see what you guys do next. Um, and just can't wait to see um, all the great things that you guys are headed towards. So, congratulations. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, Awesome. I love it. I love graduation. It's been such an inspiring time, but it's also a bittersweet time because we know we have to send you off to do wonderful things in the world. Um, but know that you will always have our network behind you. And I once had an intern back when I first started my professional career that said to me, she said, Abby, you know what's so amazing is that people always say don't take it personal. And she says that's so not true because it is personal. It's all about people. It's all about the people you meet every day. It's all about the people you interact with. It's all, all about the humans that we make a difference with. And I look around today and that it is true. It is personal. And I look, think of all these stories, looking at all these photos, and just seeing everyone here. And I realize that it's all about the human connections that we've made. And so I thank you all for bringing that gift of a new relationship to all of us. And know that it'll be a relationship that has just started and will continue to grow. And so with that, I invite you all now to continue the celebration as we do have refreshments here along the side. I also invite our honorees to stay here and also our award winners to come up. We're going to take a group photo of everyone before you enjoy your beverages. And um, one last final announcement is while we are sad to see you go, we are also happy to announce we will next week welcome Class 13 Atlas Core to Washington, D.C. And it means that the Atlas Core Network will jump to more than 200 fellows from 54 countries. And so we invite you all, if you look in your program, to come out and celebrate with us on September 5th, which is Thursday night. We're going to have our annual Go Global Gala here in Washington, D.C. So we hope that many of you can come out and join us. There's information on um, all the details and the link to the, uh, the event in your program. So we hope to see you. And I'd like you all to join me one last time in welcoming our honorees for the evening. Excellent. So with that, go forth, have snacks, and class 10 plus, and our award winners, please come to the front for our photo by Miss Ramona. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. So let's have <laughs> everyone get proud. I'm in the middle since he's tall. And then the uh, well, the AMC crew, all of you should the right moment. They have you all here. Come on, Jenny. I know. Okay. 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 <laughs> and friends, let's get you all in there too. Scott and Robert, Robert's you're in there too, Robert. Robert's, Robert's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see you. I don't know what's happening with that. Thank you so much. Sharing your words. You'll right. forever be on YouTube. I'll make sure to share the link. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're all going to go like that. <laughs> 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 <laughs>